In the women's, only a disaster will stop Goitetum Tasima from winning. After 30 kilometres, she is nine minutes ahead of Lisa Hunter-Galvin, who is under pressure from fellow Australian Roxy Fraser. The East Africans first rose to long distance running prominence when barefooted Ethiopian Abibi Bakila won the 1960 Rome Olympics marathon. Half a century later, those from his part of the world continue to uphold a formidable reputation. At the 2011 Gold Coast Airport Marathon, it will be the turn of a Kenyan to win. But which one? Nicholas Manza and Albert Matabor go stride for stride past the 35 kilometre mark, but soon afterwards, two at the front becomes one. Manza moves away. He is heading for home, lured by a world famous setting that today will be one forged into a winner's memory. Married, this father of a young boy is within sight of a winner's check, 11,000 US dollars. There is also the chance of a much bigger prize, 27,000 if he breaks two hours, 10 minutes. It is going to be close. The knowledge Matabor is still within reach and pushing hard helps drive him on. With a few hundred metres remaining, victory will go to Nicholas Manza. As he nears the finisher's shoot, it is now a race against the clock. The seconds tick by and Nicholas lifts for one last effort, swept on by the crowd. Two hours, ten minutes, one second. The bonus may have slipped past by the cruelest of margins, but there is a surprise. In a goodwill gesture, organisers decide to add another $11,000 to his winnings for breaking the race record. Very special for me because uh, this is my first time to be in Australia. And uh, I'm happy because uh, I've, I've gone with the first record. Matabor finishes just 12 seconds behind. The fast finishing Jaffet Kip career is a further 37 seconds back. The plan was to hang with the, 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 the leading group until where I can, if, if I can go on with, the, with their base, I just go on. But the, the base was a bit higher. Maybe the, 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 uh, the, the, the person who won increased the base, but I just used my own base until I finish. Japan's Taigo Ito and Noriaki Takahashi round out the top five. Lee Troop is sixth in two hours, 15 minutes, 45. Amid the disappointment, admiration for the Kenyans.
I've raced them for 20 years. They're good, you know. Even their B grade and C grade Kenyans are good. I mean, this isn't even the top tier. And, uh, you know, they come in here and they just get in the pack, they roll around, they talk, you know, they give each other water, you know, and I knew that they were all going to work together. You know, it's all about trying to get the bonus of breaking the course record and getting the money. And even the, one of the pacemakers was struggling and they were talking to him and trying to get him up on pace. So, you know, even the Ethiopian was working with the Kenyan. So just the Africans in general work together and they're tough wherever you race them. It's a great day for Kenya. The winning time, the third fastest ever on Australian soil. A good performance by the Japanese, and Lee Troop is not disheartened, knowing he has other chances to book his spot to the London Olympics. There is no surprise in the women's. Ethiopia's Goitetum Tasima blitzes her rivals in two hours, 30 minutes, Eight seconds. The second fastest time in the 33 year history of the Gold Coast Airport Marathon. Two years ago, Australia's Roxy Fraser finished second at the Gold Coast with a personal best time. History repeats itself in 2011. I'm actually stoked with that because going into the race I didn't even have a goal because the furthest I went before today was a half, so to be honest, yeah, I, I wasn't expecting to do very well and I ended up doing a PB, so amazing. Japan's Tahiro Tanaka is third. But all the talk is about 24-year-old Goitetum Tasima winning by more than 11 minutes and continuing a successful year that included coming second in the Rome Marathon. After Fraser and Tanaka, Australians fill all other spots in the top eight. For first timers, Michael Coburn. Look, I'm going as I expected. First uh, 30 k's were reasonably good. The splits for the last 10 k's have been horrible. But legs are burning, but I'm going to get to the line, all right? So. Good. Marion McAllister. Sounds like a long way. The way I'm feeling. <laughs> Megan <laughs> Crockford. Start to hurt. <laughs> and Scott Shepherd, who has begun counting every single step. This may be a trying and at times painful experience, but it is an unforgettable one. Michael finishes in a better time than he'd hoped. Yeah, well, I actually I took off sort of halfway between the 3.45 and 4 hour mark, so I actually clocked about 3.42, so reasonably happy. Scott crosses the line 15 minutes later. The pain of his ordeal all too evident as he is taken away for treatment for dizziness and sore legs. Probably expected when I got about 35k mark that the calf definitely was getting sore and just that turn at Runaway Bay had never come quick enough but got there and awesome feeling, can't wait to do another one. Marion finishes with a smile in 4 hours 17 minutes. Oh, it was really hard that last bit. I was doing okay for about the first 20 k's. I thought, you know, not too bad. It felt pretty good. But that's the way it should be, isn't it? And then oh, the last 10 or 15 was really grinding, you know. And Megan is nine minutes further back. It was good. It was um, it was pretty even pace the whole way. Just trying to just keep a rhythm the whole way. Not let the little orange balloons pass me, so I could go on to sub four, four and a half. And um, yes, yeah, really started to hurt up the top legs, got a bit wobbly, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the burst of energy came from at the end, but there it was. The Gold Coast Airport Marathon has been run and won for another year. 2012 is waiting.